Okay, getting ready to put on the transducer bracket. <laughs> my little makeshift uh, part of my security. <laughs> and uh, that's where it's going to go. Okay, here's the plan. Got the uh, bracket from Lauren here in the uh, spring bracket and uh, shield. And we're going to put it with these spacers the shorter spacer will go or the bigger spacer will go there the shorter one will go on the other side and this will be mounted beneath a step and uh, I do like this design better than the other options I've seen I'll go over it a little bit later but and the reason we had such thick spacers is if you look at where they put the tie down here See, I, I usually just uh, tie down one strap to the trailer, and it comes all the way up to the towable hook location. But that strap will go right where this uh, this assembly is. I'm not sure I'll be able to use it that way anymore. But anyway, with the with the big spacer in there, there'll be a gap in between the plate and the hull. So if I need to get a strap behind it, I'll have that op option. So that's why. There'll be a gap there, so we'll see how this works out. So these are the original bolts, and Lauren did supply some longer ones, so don't be like me and almost accidentally just use the shorter ones. Make sure you use the newer long ones to account for the uh, extra space of the spacer in the uh, plate. Okay, right side is done, all bolted on. Go to left side. Okay, both sides are installed <clears throat> under the step brackets. So again, you can see the reason we <clears throat> thought that the bigger spacer would be preferable is if you needed to use this tie down, there's some space in between there. Uh, I don't know, pretty usable. And uh, I was a little worried to see what the step looked like, but when it was closed, but you can see it still comes up. Totally flush, looks good. I noticed on the Garmin transponder, there's a couple little tabs. I guess fit into their brackets better, but for the uh, shield I got, there's no hole made for that, so I'm just gonna trim these off with the knife. Yeah, just hand tighten a couple screws to put the transponder on the uh, shield there, get an idea what it looks like. Just positioning, or I'm gonna drill my holes and yeah, some guys aren't going to agree with this, but I do not want wires coming up above the deck because we have kids uh, using towables and stuff. I don't want them tripping. Uh, so, yeah, some guys aren't going to like this, but I'm just going to use the little mount that the uh, Garmin came with and just use 3M4200 to uh, fill in the gaps. You know, I know this isn't supposed to be below the waterline. Uh, some guys have done it. Uh, the ski's only in the water for, you know, one to four hours at a time. I don't expect any problems. Uh, the This particular garment's got the four four pin connector, so be drilling a five eighths inch hole to pass that through, and then two screw holes that will dig into the fiberglass. Uh, there's no way I'm tearing out the inside of this jet ski to get a nut or something uh, better like Lauren makes a uh, pass-through fitting for underwater applications it's really nice but I'm a big dude and I'm not crawling inside the back of the jet ski to get to the other side of this to be able to hold nuts in place so that's the plan Let's see how it goes here the camera is just sitting above the engine engine compartment looking back to the right side of the hull so that's the inside of that tow hook bracket or the uh, tie down bracket and uh, I guess there is something on the other side, so you have to do it on the right side. I don't remember what it is offhand, but um, so yeah, you can see there's some space in the fiberglass all around that bracket. Um, but you can see if you wanted a pass through fitting, one of those, a nicer one, and you need to access the back of that, there's no room. You're gonna have to remove all this uh, baffling and the uh, hoses and the wiring and stuff. and 
you gotta be a small guy. How are you gonna crawl back there? So, yeah, you can see why some guys are just putting the wire up on top of the uh, the rear swim deck. I totally understand that. I just uh, I'm using this jet ski for everything it can offer, so I don't want any uh, kids uh, tripping on the wiring and stuff. And uh, this will definitely look better, but uh, anyway. Just gonna show you what else Lauren sent me. He's really uh, did an awesome job. Just everything he sent, everything we discussed on the plans. I mean, look at this. These trim peel and stick uh, guides for drawing the Garmin included uh, pass through. That's just great. He included a lot of extra hardware and stuff. Uh, really great at responding to, to emails and stuff. If you guys need any help or machine work. I think uh, you should definitely try to contact uh, Lauren. Does a great job. Okay, I got my template lined up where I'd like to uh, put the pass through. I know you should put some tape or something on the on the fiberglass before you drill it, but this is pretty thick uh, sticker material. I think it's probably good enough. The Garmin for the pass through, like I said before, five eighths inch. Now uh, Lauren. Uh, he was kind enough to go find me a hole saw because they didn't have one at the Home Depot where I live. And uh, I paid him uh, extra to ship one out with the other stuff. Now my dad, at the same time, he uh, sent me this diamond, Milwaukee diamond head tile cutting hole saw. We might make a cleaner cut in the fiberglass. Now I've used hammer drill hole saw applications before, but I don't like it when the guide there's no guide bit or the guide bits below the surface you know I'm not that experienced uh, getting a nice clean starter hole with no guide bit but I think I might start the hole with this get a little edge going maybe switch over to this one afterwards I'm just worrying about when you touch if, you, if this is spinning and it touches the fiberglass it's gonna start running away you know uh, but the guide bit should hold it right in place where it should be the screws for the pass-through fitting came with the Garmin 1 8 it says 1 8 inch uh, hole for those I did test it with some wood it does seem appropriate for these uh, screws so all right pass-through holes done whoo don't like drilling holes in the hole but man. okay so yeah I did start it with this and you know honestly it could have been completely fine just using it with this I think it uh it just kind of creates this fiberglass dust. It didn't like, uh, you know, I was worried it would be too uh, aggressive, uh, uh, you know, a bitch there. But I switched over to this, gave it a try. It, uh, yeah, it worked all right. Had to put push it a little harder to kind of grind away at it. But uh, yeah, honestly, this might have been uh, better, the better option. So I wouldn't worry about it either one. It's okay. Okay, drilling's done. Uh, let's see, you got our pass through and two uh, mounting holes. Time to clean up all this uh, fiberglass. All right, pulled the uh, cable through, just pushed it in the back. Use my nifty grabber thing to uh, retrieve it from the back of the ski. Let's see if I can see it back there on my flashlight. Yep. There it is, coming along. All right, so this is what I got so far. Got the transonder mounted there. I just kind of put a tie wrap here, holding it loosely. I put one of these little, uh, it's got like a sticky back uh, sticker clip thing and put another tie wrap. I don't know, maybe just keep it a little more secure. Let's see, <laughs> we'll see how that holds up in the salt water. And all that's left to do is put on the uh, pass-through mount and the uh, 3M4200. All right, so I put the sealant all around there inside the screw holes, everything. Now I'm going to put this in, screw it down, wait for it to dry, and then I'm going to add more sealant in the, uh, the hole at the bottom. All right, so this is where so far. Uh, I just installed the pass-through fitting. There is, uh, I'm going to wait for the sealant to dry. And I'm going to put more around here. Maybe I'll just cover up the whole thing. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. Uh, so yeah, here's another look at the... Uh, this is Lauren's bracket. 
uh, anodized aluminum, really nice. Uh, this is the spring back, so if you hit a rock or something under under the uh, water, there'll be some give to it. Uh, so far, the only thing I don't like about it is that it's not easily adjustable. The angle here, I have to bend the actual aluminum. I kind of eyeballed it, but depending on the trim <clears throat> and what you're doing, the angle of the uh, watercraft, you know, could be pretty level. Could be really high up. I know a lot of times, especially when I have a, a one or two kids in the back, the the water's kind of coming over this so there's quite a quite an angle so I angled this up to try and compensate because the ski is probably going to be uh, nose high a little bit in a lot of situations so we'll just see how that goes I did buy the uh, extra spring that they offer for this but it's it's pretty sturdy the only thing I was worried about is if the nozzle water is coming this way is it going to affect this or try and move it uh, we'll see about that I think it would probably be okay um, but if not, I have the other spring. <clears throat> I did order the uh, tool to uh, help with this because you do need to disassemble this to mount things and then reassemble it and put the spring back in. It's uh, not super easy, but it's not too bad. I forgot to mention the spring back came with these little splash guard plates. And, but if you look at it, my transducer gets in the way. So I'm not sure if it's just a bad design or if it's just a... With my particular setup, it's just not going to work, but uh, uh, the shield and the spring came from the same uh, company, so I don't know. I guess I'm just going to leave mine off. All right, now I'm taking apart some of the panels because I'm going to be mounting this uh, in the right cup holder. There is a oh, where is it? A little pass-through hole, not the center one, but there is one next to it, so I'm going to use that one. It's bigger, but to get inside this area... You have to take off this panel and this panel. Not too bad, just a few of these screws. Only after a couple months, it's already showing some uh, rust, I guess, in there or something. Also, if you guys are using their Yamaha RAM mounting stuff, I didn't buy it through them. You can just get all the stuff on Amazon or RAM's website. But I don't know if it's uh, what it is, the RAM... The threaded posts are a little too long, so you'll see there's a gap in there. So it's not not as secure as it could be. So if you go to Home Depot, I think these they're kind of rubbery. I think they call them a nylon washer or something. So you buy a few of these, and it'll kind of bridge that gap and give it a little more of a snug fit. So that's what I would recommend for that. Okay, just show you to get in here. You have to remove this panel. And uh, you got to remove a few of these um, Allen bolts I found using a, uh, is it a 5 30 second bit works good. You need, a, I'm using a 10 millimeter socket, it might be something standard, but uh, you're going to have to use that, the socket here on the inside of that part. And you'll need the socket on the inside here in combination with the Allen key or Allen uh, tool. And don't forget, there's a couple on top here you have to get to also. Oh, great. Dropped something down there. Turns out it's my, uh, my uh, Allen wrench bit. Don't be stupid like me. Woohoo! Magnet saved me. And when you get all the uh, bolts and things off, just note you got to slide this thing forward to get it out of the slots. All right, if you can see here, it's like the main cable pass through. Get a perspective while we're looking here. So my plan is to cut that zip tie and have the uh, Garmin cables come up through there and then just uh, re-zip tie it. You can see right above there is the cup holder and we can access it easily through there. All right, it's a little hard to get to the inside of that pass-through. So I put a piece of wire in there. I'm gonna fish it. I got the two Garmin wires. I just uh, used the electrical tape, taped it to that. So the plan is to pull it up through there. It's probably gonna put on a little uh, lubrication <laughs> and get it, get it going up through there a little bit easier. All right, cool, that worked. 
Okay, just going to put this together, see, make sure I have enough uh, length of wire coming out of that area. So this is what comes, this is what came in my garment, this thing, and this plastic base. And I bought the this ram piece and the uh, this little arm here from Amazon. I didn't screw anything together, just seeing how it fits together. Uh, looks pretty good like that like the wires on the inside it doesn't seem to be blocking the uh, screen or anything so I think this is how it's gonna be okay so it's doing the wiring here since I'm not linking up with any other devices I don't need the blue or the brown wire and I was gonna use uh, shrink wrap tubing to help uh, put the extension wire because it won't fit it won't go all the way to the battery I thought well I got these little uh, male female connector clips so I guess I'll just uh, maybe try those out that way if I need to disconnect things it'll be a little, little bit e easier than I have already had the wire didn't have to go to Home Depot so that's good happen to have these other little connectors to crimp on so uh, we'll see how this goes okay <clears throat> this is finished all the wiring <clears throat> the, uh, I guess you might have some interference if you have the power any power wires next to the signal wire, so I just separated them. Use the little uh, sticky zip tie mounting things. And there we go. Just real simple, nothing fancy. Just a uh, wire to the battery. And yep, it works. So it turns on. Cool. Alright, this is the pretty much finished job. You can see. Uh, Filled up the uh, pass-through fitting with uh, sealant and just pretty much gooped it all over there. I mean, it, if this stuff holds up in salt water, I just don't see any water getting in. And it's not like this thing is stored in water or anything, so eh. I guess the only time will tell. Okay, so this is the garment I picked. It's the uh, Strike a Plus 4CV. Uh, yeah, I know Yamaha is kind of marketing the smaller... Garmin Striker, but I mean, if you're going to do this yourself, why don't just get the uh, one with the bigger screen and this, uh, the one with the clear view. So, yeah, the, it's a little bit bigger transonder, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. The uh, so this is a transducer shield and saver spring back bracket, uh, the extra spring I did not install, I did get their little tool also, and that's where I got the shield. The, <clears throat> to mount the transponder onto in the mounting bracket everything else uh, Came from Lauren P. So really appreciate uh, his help Has some uh, really good stuff. <clears throat> I wouldn't hesitate to contact him for uh, for whatever you need for your uh, Your watercraft. I'll uh, leave all those uh, links in the description. Thanks So I came back out here because um, I want to do a try and adjust the height of the uh, transducer <laughs> I think I keep calling it transonder I don't know but uh, so this is uh, uh, another reason I really like Lauren's design on the bracket is he used the slots so if you have a bunch of holes you have to take apart this entire spring bracket to remove the screws and put them back in here I can just loosen up <clears throat> the three bolts or screws on the back and then this thing will just slide to the position I want. I can just retighten it. Uh, really cool design. Okay, got it in the water. Seems to be uh, working pretty good. Probably hard to see, but uh, yeah, no complaints. So just doing a quick follow-up video. I've had it in the water about three times now, I think, since the installation. The first time I realized uh, I was losing the depth above 20 miles per hour so um, with Lauren's suggestion this is my first <laughs> transducer and stuff but um, yeah I thought maybe this was too high and plus there was a zip tie here that might have been uh, causing some problems or water turbulence so I took off the zip tie and bent this down more this is slid down in the lowest position and it worked a lot better. I've gotten it around 45 miles per hour and it uh, doesn't seem to lose the depth reading. The wire 
bends to the right side now, so I don't know if that's just part of the the nozzle water thrust pushing it over there or what. But it seems to be okay. And if you look at the uh, here's the uh, pass through, no leaks, still bone dry on the inside, and uh, you can see. Utilizing the tie down strap goes behind the bracket and it's working out pretty good So thanks for watching. I'm gonna make another video. I think on all the uh, Accessories I bought for this thing and just go over uh, what I like and dislike about them. So That'll be something for the future. Thank you <laughs> What was that orange something? Danger orange Orange Justice Dance.